Universal Studios producer and director Mrs. B. Scene one. Hello boys and girls around the world and yes my name is Mrs. B and I'm a teacher in the United States. I'm so glad that you're able to join me today for a very special read aloud. But before we begin, I have a hello song just for you. Hello, boys and girls around the world. Hello, boys and girls around the world. How are you? How are you? I'm glad you're here to read and learn. We know we'll have some fun today. We love school every day. And so will you. Oh, boys and girls, Mrs. B has a very terrible singing voice. But she so wanted to share a song with all of you. The book that I've selected for today's read aloud is called Kumak's River. And the person that wrote this book is called Michael Bania. And boys and girls, he is the author that wrote this book. And the person that drew the pictures is called an illustrator. And it just so happens it's the same person, Michael Bania. Wow, what a talented person to have written this book and also is the illustrator. Boys and girls, this is a tall tale from the far north. So a tale, boys and girls, is fiction. It cannot happen in real life. So it's pretend or make believe. And boys and girls, this is the front or the cover. And if we turn this book over, this is the back of the book. If we turn it over to the front again, and we look at the title and the illustration, what do you think that this story is going to be about? Yes, it's about Kumak and his family, boys and girls. And it's um, about Arctic life, Arctic village life, and all the challenges that they face throughout the story. So boys and girls, we're going to see exactly what challenges they face in just a minute. I want to go over some punctuation marks that you're going to see in this book and other stories that you will read along the way. The first mark is called a period. And a period when you're reading means to stop. But Mrs. B likes to say pause because boys and girls will stop and take forever to move on to the next word or sentence. So just a brief pause and then move on when you're reading. The next mark is called a comma, boys and girls, and it does mean to pause. It brings together two or more sentences. It joins them. And then also a comma can be used to make a list. The next mark is an exclamation mark. It can mean one of two things. The first thing is you can put it at the end of a sentence to show great emotion. Or it can mean to give a command like get out, sit down. The next mark is called a question mark. And we put this at the end of a sentence when we don't know the answer to something. So it's an asking sentence. The last mark is called a quotation mark. Quotation marks more than one because we have the pair of beginning and a pair of ending quotation marks. A pair means 
two. When somebody starts talking in a sentence, we put the beginning quotation marks. And then when they stop talking, we put the end quotation marks after the punctuation mark. Boys and girls, I want your eyes and your ears on Mrs. B because she's going to ask you several questions while reading the story, basically. And if you remember that reading means, boys and girls, understanding the author's message. So it's just not Mrs. B calling out a bunch of words to you. If you cannot answer comprehension questions after reading a page, then you have not truly read anything, boys and girls. And boys and girls, at the very end, I have a fun activity that you can do at home with your family. Are you ready for Mrs. B to begin? Boys and girls, when Mrs. B reads, or when you read, are you going to read left to right or right to left? I'm going to read left to right, and then I move to the next line and read left to right, left to right. Each spring, the frozen river near Kumak's house cracked and broke into millions of pieces. But this year, the pieces of ice were bigger than anyone in Kumak's family could remember. Chucks of ice as big as houses crashed into each other and started moving downriver on their way to the sea. While Kumak and his family stood listening to the ice scrape along the riverbanks, Kumak said, As sure as seagulls return in spring, that river will come to visit us today, boys and girls. And here is Kumak and his wonderful family. And boys and girls, if you look at this page, somebody is talking in this sentence right here. And what punctuation mark is that? Quotation marks, you remember, boys and girls. And there are the end quotation marks beginning and then ending quotation marks. And boys and girls, when we start a sentence, we must use a capital letter in the first word that you start your sentence with. Soon enough, the ice jammed in a bend of the river. Kumat's dogs leaped up and down, barking, ruff, 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 ruff as the huge chunks of ice piled onto each other and came to a stop. Then, just as Kumak said, the river came to visit. First, the water spilled out of the river banks. It flowed up over the sandy beach and inched its way past the fish rakes and catches. Then the water rose higher climbing toward the houses where the villagers lived. Oh, no. Here it comes, shouted Kumak's wife as water swirled past the church steps. Good thing we put our dried fish and meat in the cachet last fall, said Kumak's wife's mother as the river rose even higher, surging past the storm. Hooray! No classes today, shouted Kumak's sons and daughters as the icy water surrounded the school. But it didn't stop there. It continued rising toward all the houses of the village. Boys and girls, here I want to make a prediction. What do you think is going to happen to the village? A prediction means that you're going to guess what happens next 
based on what Mrs. B is reading or what you're reading, and then looking at all the illustrations to give you clues. It's very close to the village, all this ice and water. Kulak and his family scram scrambled up on top of their house. Kumak pushed his wife up. He pushed his wife's mother up. He pushed his sons and daughters up. But before Kumak himself climbed up, he put all his dogs into the family boat and tied it to the house. Just in time, said Kumak. Just in time, said his family as they pulled Kumak up. Look at boys and girls how high the water is getting. All the animals are safe on the boat and Kumak and his family are safe on top of their home. Boys and girls, look at this punctuation mark, the dot right here. What is that dot called? A period. Good job. No sooner had the villagers scrambled to their rooftops than the river surrounded them all. Just in time, they said. And it was a warm and sunny day. No one needed a jacket or gloves. People sat on their houses and shouted across to their neighbors. How are you doing, they called. We're doing fine, their neighbors called back. Even though the ice was no longer moving, smaller chunks sometimes broke away from the main river and floated toward the houses. With a long pole, Kumak pushed away any ice that came too close to his boat or his home. And there is Kumak with the pole and other neighbors as well, pushing the smaller chunks of ice away from their homes. So it does not do any damage, boys and girls. The village dogs sat in their boats, waiting for something to happen. Then something did happen. And what do you think is going to happen, boys and girls? Let's see if you're right. While Kumak's family sat on top of their house, the river down below went wherever it wanted to go. And it did whatever it wanted to do. Look! said Kumak's wife. At one o'clock, the river began pushing all the oil drums away. There are the oil drums floating away, boys and girls. I wonder if this village is going to be okay. Is there a miracle in sight here? Will this be a happy ending or a sad ending to this story? Look, said Kumak's wife's mother, at two o'clock, the river was busy shoving all the net floats and fish tubs away. Look, said Kumak's sons and daughters, at three o'clock, the river stole all the children's toys and pulled them away. They're losing all their property, boys and girls. Oh no, wailed Kumak's sons and daughters as they watch their playthings drift by. We will never see our toys again. This is so sad, boys and girls. These people worked so hard to buy all these things for their families, and they're being washed away. And boys and girls, what is this punctuation mark right there with a line and dot? An excited mark or exclamation mark. So when we're young, we call it an excited mark. And then when you're older, you can call it an exclamation mark. And here it shows what? It's giving a command. It's not showing great emotion. When you say, look. 
What can we do, said Kumak, pushing away another chunk of ice. A river does what a river does. As the day grew older, the ice stubbornly refused to budge from the river bend. The river had plenty of time to visit every house in the village and do whatever it wanted to do. While Kumak and his family sat and waited, enormous pressure, large, big pressure was building up behind the ice jam. More and more ice from upriver kept coming downriver, pushing toward the sea. With no place to go, the ice jam grew bigger and bigger and bigger, boys and girls. How much more can these villagers handle? And boys and girls, I am asking something here. So what punctuation mark is this? A question mark. Good job, boys and girls. Now, who is the main character in this story? A character could be people or animals. The main characters are Kumak, he's the main character, and then his family. And then the animals uh, and the other neighbors are characters too, but they're not the main characters, boys and girls. And what is the setting? Where is this story taking place? In the Arctic outside. Good job, boys and girls. At four o'clock sharp, the ice finally broke free. The river surged forward, tossing ice and logs into the air. Oh, boys and girls, this can't be happening. Look at all the logs just floating around and being tossed in the air by the chunks of ice. Even the birds and the seagulls don't know what to do. Just like someone pulled a plug in a bathtub, the water around the village started going up. More boys and girls? Did it go more up or down? When you pull the plug in the bathtub, when you're taking a bubble bath, does the water go up or does it go down and disappear? It goes down, so the water around the village started going down. Hooray! Everyone shouted with joy. The water swooshed away from their houses. It splashed by the school, sloshed past the store and the church steps. It swirled around the fish racks and caches. And finally, the water slid down over the sandy beach back into the riverbanks where it belonged, boys and girls. Just in time, cried the villagers as they jumped down from their rooftops. Whatever they had not tied down before the flood, the river did have carried away, boys and girls, so they couldn't save their other belongings. Kumak and his family searched around their house. Sure enough, there were no oil drums, no fish tubs or net floats, and no toys for his children. Pretty much many of their belongings, boys and girls, has been washed away, but some things have been saved. So that's a good thing. At least they're all alive. Kumak's wife called to their neighbors. Have you seen our oil drums, fish tubs, net floats, or toys? Their neighbors called back. No, ours are missing too. And when Kumak looked at the spot where he had tied the boat holding his dogs, they were... Were they there, boys and girls, or were they gone? They were gone. 
We will never see our dogs again, wailed Kumak's sons and daughters. Kumak gathered his family. The river took our things, and it took our neighbors' things. It had its turn to do what it wanted to do. Now it is time for us to do what we need to do. Kumak and his family began searching the village for their missing things. Boys and girls, when you lose something, do you go after it and try to find it? Or do you say, oh, I'll just buy something else? Mrs. B has lost some things in the past. And when she searched for it, I never gave up, boys and girls, and I was able to find it. And sometimes if you can't find something, well, then at least you tried. Then you can buy um, another one just like it. But it's not going to be the same as it. At 5 o'clock, Kumak heard a neighbor call out, We hear barking at Uncle Buggy's house. Like frisky caribou, everyone ran to Uncle Buggy's house. There they found a few dogs, but not Kumak's dogs. They also find, found all their oil drums and happily rolled them back home. At, boys and girls, six o'clock, show me six o'clock with your fingers. Kumak heard another neighbor call out. We hear barking at Teta, Joe's house. Like playful seals, the villagers splashed to Teta, uh, Joe's house. There they found more dogs, but still not Kumak's dogs. Happily, they did find all the missing net floats and fish tubs, which they untangled and carried home. Slowly but surely, boys and girls, they are being able to find all of their belongings, but they still haven't found their own dogs. Boys and girls, will they find their dogs? The Kumat family. Let's see if your prediction is correct. Where are our toys and our dogs? Sniffed Kumat's children. Did the ice carry them away? But Kumat couldn't say. Perhaps the river had carried them out to sea. Kumat and his family ran from house to house and down the muddy roads, searching all along the river, but they found no dogs and no toys. At seven o'clock, boys and girls, show me seven. Just as everyone was taking a break for dinner, a neighbor knocked on Kumat's door. We hear howling at Aunt Rosie's house. Leaping up means to jump. Kumak and his family joined the villagers and ran like the wind through the willows to Aunt Rosie's house. What do you think they're going to find at Aunt Rosie's house, boys and girls? Do you think they're going to find the dogs? That's what I think. And possibly the toys, because that's the only two things that are missing still. There they spotted an enormous pile of toys. But where were Kumak's dogs? Here they are, cried little Nate. And here is little Nate. So they are very happy, boys and girls. Just in time, cheered the villagers. Just in time, said Kumak's family. Look at boys and girls. They have all of their belongings. At the end of the very long day, all the missing things were back where they belonged. The village children raced along the edge of the river, watching the last of the ice go out. That river was a big help this year, said Kuma, and it didn't visit for too long. Now it will bring us fish, 
and seals, said Kumok's wife. Now we can travel to camp and pick berries, said Kumok's wife's mother. It had been eight long months since the river was free of ice. Everyone was eager to get out on the water again. Now it is our turn to visit the river, said Kumok. Let's go boating, the children shouted. Yes, let's go boating, cried the villagers. Because boys and girls, they need the fish that they catch to eat. And also collect berries so that they can eat. This is how the Arctic villagers live, boys and girls. They lead a very humble life. And so they did. They went boating, boys and girls. What a beautiful day to go boating. Look at all the wonderful colors. The end. Boys and girls, what did you think of this book, Kumax River? If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you did not like it, give it a thumbs down. I gave it a thumbs up too. I like reading books about other cultures and countries, just not books from the United States because you learn a great deal from other people around the world. Boys and girls, I have an activity for you to do at home with your families. So parents, grandparents, older brothers and sisters, here is the activity to do with your child at home. I want you to locate Alaska on a map or on the globe and find where Alaska is and look up Alaska and Arctic animals on the internet. I want you to make a list of all the animals you find that live in the Arctic. And then I want you to find pictures in magazines, old books, or on the internet. And I want you to print them or cut them out and glue them onto a very big poster board. And then I want you to give it a title like Arctic Life or you can call it from the book title, Kumax River. And then I want you to hang that poster up in your room. Or if you are in school, boys and girls, you can share it with your teacher and classmates if you go to school. Mrs. B had printed up a little report here because she talks about, she found the Arctic in Alaska. And then also, boys and girls, the animals that live on the Arctic, this is being found. Polar bear is a carnivore. That means it's a meat eater. There are carnivores, meat eaters. There are herbivores. They only eat plants. And then there's omnivores. They eat meat and plants. The next Arctic animal that I found when we're doing research is a walrus. And here is a walrus, and walrus is a mammal like us, and they are carnivore. And then we have a seal. They are a mammal, and they are carnivore, so they are meat eater as well. And the norwhale is also a mammal and carnivore. And then we have the beluga whale is a ma mammal and a carnivore carnivore, so they are meat eater as well, boys and girls. So then I would glue all these, we'll first cut them out and then glue them onto my poster board and then call them Arctic Life. Boys and girls, I want to thank you for joining me today, but I have a very special guest that's visiting me here in my office, in my home, and this is also my mini classroom. And I wonder who the visitor is. <sighs> It's Garfield. Oh, Garfield, thank you for joining Mrs. B and all the boys and girls around the world. Would you like to help me by saying goodbye to all of them? Garfield says yes. Boys and girls, reading is fundamental. And bye for now and hope to see you again soon.